guys, it's the 105 here and welcome back to another reaction video and today we are going to react to the Thrones of Decay DLC and this time I'm back with your boy, the Radical Dude! What's up Space Knight, good to be back, let's get this going. So without further ado, let's watch. I'm super excited for this. Whoa, what's happening down there? Whoa, who's Fire. that? Oh, I think I know who that person is. It's Elsa! Elsa von Draken. Yeah! Her Carmine Dragon. Mm -hmm. Whoa, what's going on? What, what the? Who is that? Jimmy Grimm. So, oh, Theodore Fr Fruckner. Oh, okay. Okay, wow, troll. Ogres? Leg ogres. Like I think those are ogres. Engineer! Oh, the engineer! Engineer! <gasps> oh, dragon. Yes! Let it go! Is that who I think it is? Oh, my God. Leg ogres. Oh, 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 Malachi! Malachi! Oh! Go Wait, is that Gothrak and Helix? Thunderbard! And yeah, that was Gothrak and Helix. Oh, the Goblin Hewer! Oh, Rock Knight! Is that Antidemius? The Land Ship! That sailed! Yeah, that's the other Rock I recognize that guy. This is crazy! I didn't know what's going on, bro, but this is awesome! Ba 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 Wow, what a surprise! We got Elsef, Tamarkan, and Malachi Makaisen! I mean, yeah, I figure it's going to be Tamarkan and Elsef, especially with the uh, title, Thrones of Decay, and the book, Thrones of Chaos. But the dwarf character was always like the toss-up. It was like, if I recall, I think I had three options. Joseph Bugman, Malachi Makaisen, or Grim Burlickson. So it could have been either of those three. But either way, it's awesome. So let's go see what this trailer has in store for us. Okay, so I'm assuming this is Nuln? I mean, that's my guess. It's kind of like in the book where Tom Rakan sieged Nuln near the end of his book. And this is obviously Elsa on her Carmine Dragon. I mean, yeah, if you had doubts she's a Lord Deathcaster, I mean, I don't know what to tell you, dude. Although I prefer Shadows over Death, to be honest with you. Yeah, I like the Lord of Shadows as well. I mean, if you watch my videos, then you would know. Flashback. All the kills for me. <laughs> One minute, 37 seconds later. Holy Look at all this damage! 1,500 kills! And a flashback. Take a look at the model of the dragon. Well, it looks very similar to the High Elf dragon. Just a few changes in the model as well as a different skin color. Then we have, I'm assuming, the Empire's first legendary hero? Have we have a legendary hero for the Empire already? Unless you count Gotrek and Felix, no, I don't think so. Unless you count the, uh, the Marcus Wolfhard squad. Yeah, unless you count those guys. Okay, so who is the name of this character again? Theodore Bruckner, I believe. So if I recall, he's supposed to be like, I guess, the bodyguard or like one of the professional fighters for the, uh, Countess of Nome. Emmanuel, if I recall. He has a super crush on her, she just uses him to fight stuff, and he played a key role in the end of the battle against Tamarkan, which I'm not going to spoil here. Now, when I look at the Demigrip, I'm thinking this is kind of like the alpha of all Demigrips, I think. Let I me mean, just look at the design, it looks different than the other Demigrips that we know. Oh yeah, that's a unique uh, Demigrip there. I'm just trying to see what the name of that Demigrip is called again. Demigrip Reaper. Wow, mm -hmm. that's a cool name for a Demigrip. I also hope that with uh, this guy coming into the game, that maybe like, say, Empire Captains will finally get a Demigriff mount. Maybe you can give a mount option to the Huntsman General too. Yeah, it does suck that he's only on foot. I imagine this guy will be like a duelist or just a big tanky guy. That's just a guess, judging from his lore as well as from here. And judging by his weapon, I'm thinking he's also anti-large too? Uh, I mean, a lance doesn't always mean anti-large. It comes and goes per faction, so your guess is as good as mine. Wait a dang minute. What is that? What, what is that Imperial soldier holding? Doesn't that look like a rifle or what? You remember in the Beastman trailer? 
where there was an Empire captain holding a rifle that shoots like multiple times like a machine gun. You mean a repeater rifle like the uh, what's called Outrider rifle? Yeah, but this one is on foot. Are you sure about that? Yeah, it does look like a repeater one. Well, is that the non iron side? That would be my guess, but it's hard to tell from this angle. Which is good. I mean, the Empire really needs some more firepower if they want to fight against newly upgraded Chaos Warriors with their new friends and their new rework. They're gonna need some help. Yeah, the Empire definitely needs some help, especially with the rework, because they've been getting pummeled ever since the more Empires launched. Uh, if I was to guess, I think that's a plague ogre since they were prevalent in Tamar Khan's uh, story and his book and his campaign. He looks exactly like his model with the cogwheel like part on his hat. I really hope he has the mechanical horse mount. What's better than riding regular horse than riding a mechanical horse? I hope that means that it's either like higher armor or perfect vigor at the very least since it's mechanical. Whoa! You see how big so that mad. thing is? Didn't I state before that almost as big as a Dread Saurian? No thanks, I choose life. Uh, it feels so good to have this thing finally in the game. Love this is something that I've been wanting for Nurgle ever since I found out about it. It's like they hired Guillermo del Toro to make this thing. Okay, I th I'm guessing the ones below him are the non iron sides. I mean, they got feathers on their head, different from Empire Riflemen, but I really do not know. There's Tamar Khan in his ogre body, specifically called, uh, if I recall, Kraka Break Mountain. Kraka Break Mountain? Is that the name of the ogre? Yeah, that was the name of the ogre that he did eventually took uh, control of his body when he lost in a duel against them. And there's Bubalos. I think that was the name of the Toad Dragon. Are those Rot oh. Knights? Yep, they're technically Rot Knights. There we go, another unit confirmed. Write it down. Write that down, write that down! And there's the Slayer Engineer himself, Malachi McKyson. And who is this one right over here? Uh, either a new Slayer unit or a Slayer hero of some kind, because he looks very different compared to regular Slayers. I can already tell that. This Slayer right here is the Dwarf's first ever legendary hero. Unless you count Gold Dragon Felix and the Ancestral Spirits, it's Garagrim Iron Fist, son of Ungrim Iron Fist. There it is! The Thunder Barge. This thing is a definite upgrade to the Cathay Sky Junk. It is just more massive, it's thick. It's got plenty of guns on both sides, mind you. And can also drop a buttload of bombs. Oh yeah, that too. It puts the uh, gyro bomber to shame, it looks like. Before we go, if you look at the Slayer down there, his mohawk is actually pretty different. Yeah, that's a lot of mohawks, pal. And again, it's Garagrim Iron Fist. And if you look closely at the Thunder Barge scene, you can see Slayers drinking beer inside the ship. Wait, does that mean Joseph Bugman is in there too? Eh, I didn't see any other guy besides Slayers in there. Aw, oh, man. When are we gonna get the man, the myth, the legend? I mean, I hope so. I mean, I could use a good drink here and there. Because the difference is that his alcohol can actually heal people, which I wish was the case in real life. Wait, really? Well, I mean, Dwarven Ale in general could have some healing properties, but I think his is the best. Not only because it tastes great, but it actually does have better properties than other ones. It's like a family secret of some kind. It's just supposed to be like uh, spinning and chucking tons and tons of axes just to take out heaves of soldiers, not big ones. That's where the cannons and organ guns come into play. Oh. And it has a Slayer crew on it as well, so I'm guessing Unbreakable, and maybe the crew may not as good as regular Slayers, but I could at least hold out a little bit. That's my guess. Wait oh. a dang minute. Oh, is that, is that Kazik the Befouled? I think so. And of course, we have Epidemius. Yep, he's got a single large horn. I can recognize that there. Wait a dang minute. Look at the Thunder Barge over here. What's the, different about that one? I think it's the color of the balloon. At first, I thought this was the legendary Thunder Barge. What's the name? The Spirit of Grungi, I believe it's called. That's Malachi's personal Thunder Barge ship, if I recall. Here's the Marienburg land ship. I wonder how that compares to the steam tank. Like, is it supposed to be a lot more delicate, but way more power power or what? I wonder how the balance is going to work out. I would like to name this ship the Merry Going. What did he say? <laughs> Merry what? I didn't hear that. The Merry Going. It's, it's the opposite of the Going Merry, which is the ship of the Straw Hat Pirates in One Piece. Uh, sorry, I didn't really watch so much of One Piece. Hey, wait a minute. I think this might be the spirit of Grungi. I mean, look at the other Thunder Barges. Yeah, they're blue, so that's a uh, potential right there. Look at this wallpaper. It looks absolutely awesome. Honestly, that looks better than the Shadows of Change one. I think I like both. I just like this one better because, again, Dwarves and the Empire. Two of my favorite OG Order factions ever since I played Cold War Warhammer. And at that time, I would always call them the auto resolve boys because they're just unstoppable oh yeah dwarves were a humongous threat back in warhammer one days so what do you think of the trailer and all the new stuff they added 
Well, um, again, the trailer, again, I'm biased because it has Nurgle and Dwarves, but I feel like it's a bit uh, better, but that's because it has an actual narrative story of a rivalry with Tamarkan and Elseth, similar to uh, Grom and Eltharion. So that was the trailer of Thrones of Decay. Now let's move on to Tamarkan's gameplay. I just realized that rhymes. <laughs> nice. Tanky, disgusting, inevitable. Whoa. Look at him. He's glorious. Tamarkan offers the fantasy of building a warband from scratch. That's Kazik the Befouled right there. What is this? Tamarkan's chieftains. Well, remember, Tamarkan's story is that he started in Zambaijin and was amassing a huge army, basically a horde, really, since he's green, and just conquering and uh, making people fight for him, going all the way to Nome. If you recall, I think he actually not befriended, but kind of made Drazoath uh, follow him for a bit. Looks like some new resource in the top uh, left up there. And it seems like personal quest, so it's like an upgraded version of Marcus's Hunters. And also, I believe Tamarkan's book was the one that first introduced war mammoths like into warhammer fantasy officially good work case i couldn't ask for a better right hand thing but he also has these kind of nurgly abilities which make him really disgusting and awesome Whoa. Temekin, the maggot lord's reeking corpse, has puppeted many powerful and grotesque faces but none have served him quite like karaka oh, break mountain it is yep, in this Karaka ogre tyrant's mountain. decaying flesh. Pestigors! Pestigors! Oh yep, those are Pestigors right there. In fact, it's kind of like the models and the uh, Chaos and Conquest uh, versions that we talked about previously. Has access to Tamarkan's chieftains, providing unique heroes, units, and abilities. Camping movement range plus 10% for all armies. Recruitment health plus 10% for all non-demonic units. Hunger every time, negative three. Ability, Nurgle's favored son. Look what that does. Melee attack plus 5 for non-demonic units. Attribute immune to psychology for non-demonic units. We're kicking off in Kudatha, smack bang in the middle of the northern chaos waste, and we're already running into some angry Norskans. Must be the smell. I'd apologize, but I'm, I'm, I'm not sorry. Because what's there to be sorry about? Look at him! He's glorious! Melee defense plus 24 and damage resistance plus 20%. I think it makes him beefy. So for self, he cannot die, he heals, and then enemy damage per second. So it's the point of this one is that I don't think he's gonna have a body snatcher mechanic like the changing did, because one, we already have the chain thing, so it makes sense to do it twice in a row. But this is supposed to be like, if you are able to best him, his maggot pops out and tries to kill whatever character is nearby. Excuse me, he can get a Dreadwing Mortar too? Well, I mean, you saw the chieftains. Kazik gives the chariots, the the Rod Knights and the Toad Dragon. What do you think the Chaos Dwarf was guy was gonna give him? We'll learn more about Temekin's infectious inspiration soon, but for now, we've got a garden to build, so we'll construct some weeping creepers for the bonus to growth. Worth noting here, as part of the Nurgle alterations, only military buildings now feature the cycle mechanic to address player feedback that it wasn't great for Nurgle's economy. Yeah, for an in-depth dive into the changes, check out the links below to read the blog. Much like a garden, a dependable economy relies on stability and an inexhaustible supply of fertilizer. And with that in mind, let's go beat the fertilizer out of these Norsekins. Tamakan's whole inspiration was the Throne of Chaos novel. The DLC is even named after it in Thrones of Decay. And in that, yep. he builds this huge warband to try to destroy the Empire. And this time, maybe you can make him a bit more successful. He comes with all these really exciting units that I think Nurgle players have been dying to get their hands on. Plague Ogres, Anti-Infantry, Ogre Charge as usual, and Poison Attacks. Pesting Ogres, Armor Piercing, Melee, Vanguard Deployment, Ooh, Scaly Skin, and Poison Attacks again. I wonder what tier they are. I can imagine the Pesticors like tier two and the Plaguegoers maybe tier three. That's a guess. So yeah, he's definitely gonna fill some holes in that roster. Tamakan is a really tanky character who has a lot of weapon strength that he can bring oh. to bear against single targets. Ow. Where he kind of falls down is uh, when he's surrounded Ooh. by many other kind of smaller targets that deal anti-large damage or when he's shot at from a distance. The Nurgle Tech Tree has been rebuilt from the ground up. Currently Thank it's you. The Nurgle Tech Tree, there's actually more stuff and it's divided into two parts. It's like the Chaos War. Yeah, I mean, the Nurgle Tech Tree was one of the worst parts of any Nurgle campaign. I mean, I just have to say right there, it was awful. I don't play Nurgle, but at least these guys made it a lot better now. Yep. Tell them to bring me my money. Yeah! 
Recruitment costs minus 25% for non-demonic units. Casual replenishment plus 20% for non-demonic units. Hang on, is that actually Festus right there? Yes, it is Festus. Wonder if that's a glitch or if it's meant to be like confederation option. Well, think of it like this. Kugath is usually demonic, usually nerdlings most of the time, but still some demonics, whereas Tamarcon focuses on the non-demonic for regular monogod Nurgle faction. I'm piercing in melee, anti-large, damage dealer, and I'm again, ogre charge because I'm guns in an ogre body. As yeah, part no. of the Nurgle changes, we've addressed feedback that should make plagues more experimental. There we go. Yep, like uh, what used to be before was a plague cauldron, which was literally a reskin of Brahms cauldron. This is a different thing right here. Mental and less min maxi. So you feel like a real pox brewer. And if that's true, then they should also add it for clan pestilence too for Lord Scroll. Yeah, I've not played Lord Scroll in years, so. I don't know about that. And it's also, yeah. if I'm correct, Great Book of Grudge's favorite Skaven clan. Mm, did, not, did not know that. Besides Slanesh, his other favorite faction is Clan Pestilence. Interesting. Mm, actually, doesn't matter. Our latest conquest has put us in a position to recruit new hideous help. Oh. Tamakin's chieftains are a ragtag band of bile and boils, lord to the master of hosts' undeniable dominance. These festering heroes join our cause, bringing with them loyal soldiers from their own cultures. Kaisk the Befouled, Nurgle's legendary hero, has already embedded himself in our army and offers powerful units in exchange for a cost of dominance, which is earned through battles and events. Okay, so the new resource is called Dominance. And earned through battles and events. Cool. And these are all heroes, not lords. Yeah, I'm guessing it's kind of like the uh, dread thing from the Beastmen where you have caps, but you can constantly increase and increase the cap through dominance. You see there on the left, how it says Chieftain Fealty. Yep. You can increase the Fealty, aka for this guy, by creating plagues or defeating Words of Chaos, Korn, Slanesh, Zinch, or Norska in battle. Okay, so I bet each of these chieftains have unique different type of quests or ways to go about with gaining favor with each of them. Again, this is very similar to Marcus's Hunters where they each had their own thing saying you have to do this or that in order to make them better or get more buffs from them. I bet you that the Chaos Dwarf guy, one of the things that says is defeating dwarves increases his favor towards you. Hey, you remember you told me you want to do like a duo campaign together, but you play as Tomarkon and I play as Drazawad? Mm, that could be an awesome one right there. And lore accurate too. And plus, this guy starts in Zen by Jin, you start in the Darkland, so we're not too far away from each other. We could start with the dwarves since they're the first thing on our way. I go from the north, you go from the east. In turn, unlocking additional boons and powerful campaign abilities. Joining Kaisk is Kargan the Crazed. Is he in the lore? I can't tell you, I'm sorry. I was listening to an audiobook of Tamar Khan's, but I don't recall Kargan the Crazed unless I just was not paying attention. There was actually one guy, I forget the Chaos Sorcerer's name, but it was Sail the Faithless, that's who it was, who we talked about a long time ago. For him to get level up, he needs to raise a lot of settlements and defeat Empire Bretonian Cathay or Kiss Legend Battle. So this one gives you aspiring champions, a Hell Cannon, okay. and a Shagan. Kate Zack Fimderak. To so level him up, you have to research technology and defeat High Elves, Dark Elves, and Wood Elves. What? This guy has a serious hatred of elves, which I completely agree with. He gives you Fimirs and a Chaos Frost Dragon, not Chaos Frost Worm. Chaos Frost Dragon. Which I think this might be one of the guys I'm going for, besides Kasich. Mornhow. We upgrade him for raiding and defeating Blizzardmen, Ogres, Beastmen, or Chaos Dwarves in battle. I beg your pardon? And he actually gives you Skin Wolves and Mammoths. Interesting. Rukmar Freehorn. What? Oh, uh, I might go for this guy just because he has the Gorgon. I love that unit. Me too. Oh, I think Chieftain units count for these guys here, like in regards to, you know, Chariots, the Cal Cannons, Shagets, everything else. Okay. Oh. And this guy has a serious hatred of undead. So each of them have a different theme, which is pretty cool in my opinion. Finally, we have Ezar Doombo. So he can give you the Shotgun, the Infernal Guard, and the Dreadquake Mortar, and his thing is about defeating Skaven, Greenskins, or Dwarves. Yeah, standard Chaos Dwarf. And, of course, looting settlements. So which one do you think you're going to try to go for? Because for me, I mean, I'm always going to go for Kazik, like uh, the first one. But then second, it's kind of hard between the Finnir, Mornhow, or the Beastman guy. As for me, I will go with Case, the Befouled, for the Rock Knights and Toad Dragons. And either the Bray Shaman or the Skin Wolf for the Gorgon or the War Mammoths. Then the Femir for the Frost Dragon. And then the Chaos Dwarf for the Gunpowder Boys. More Chieftain's info shortly, but for now, I spy with my decaying eye Skaven ruins to the south. And if I know my immortal empire's geography, we can expect Boris's Kislevites beyond the Blood Marshes. <laughs> Did you hear that? Skaven or Kislev? Ezar or Kargan? Hmm. We'll get, to both. Ezra, or Kargan. <laughs> mm, we'll get to both eventually. He just got 
got blunder busted. I think that's an actual standard animation for the Infernal Castle, if I recall. Targon's hell cannons are tempting, but the coward in me is crying out for some better ranged units. Let's recruit Ezar Doombolt into our merry band and use our remaining dominance to purchase a unit of Chaos Dwarf blunderbusses. With some angry Dwarf Honestly, and Honestly, Kargan, I think Kargan the Kraze will probably be the least used uh, oh, sorry, of the Chieftains in my playthrough. I'm super excited for the Chieftains mechanic because it allows you to build a bit of a bonkers brigade. Lots of different flavors of Chaos all under the Nurgle banner. It was inspired by his story, which was uniting different tribes of Chaos and flavors of Chaos. So we thought it was important to bring to the game. He's like he's forming the actual Chaos Tide. Yeah. Or it's like he's pretty much going around gathering allies to form his own Nurgle horde. Can you imagine a mechanic like this, but for Carl France? Where he like assembles Dwarven and Elvish allies? I mean, that would be awesome in that way, sure. I mean, you can kind of do it with the ally outpost, but you're very limited with that one. Only four, if I recall, for each army. In battle, these chieftains augment Tamakan's own abilities to smash up enemy armies and cause a lot of devastation. Oh no, what is? Oh, look at that! We got a new Chaos Lord of Nurgle! Finally, and Rot Knights. Yeah. Oh, check it out. The Rot Knights actually have regeneration and anti large. So it's like the Skull Crusher. Very similar to it, yeah. I wonder who would win the fight Rot Knights or Skull Crushers? Well, remember, the Skull Crushers have flaming attacks, so that gives them an advantage over their regeneration. This isn't like Nurgle's weakness, fire. Yep, or anything with regeneration automatically has a weakness to fire. I thought it was a bathtub filled with soap. <laughs> Okay, good joke. Tamakan at his core is still a Nurgle faction. The extra units from different oh, uh, rosters yeah. are unique, even from some of the ones we've done before. So no one's ever had like Nurgle, to yeah. Chaos Dwarves mixed with Nurgle. The Chieftain mechanic is about gaining the fealty of the other flavors of Chaos, getting the best of them, and making the ultimate war host. Are those bile trolls? I think so. I hope so. Oh, Kaisk's by far my favorite. He's got toad dragons, what's not the look? Toad dragons, the perfect remedy for backstabbing Grimgore. Whilst we were busy with Boris, Mr. Ironhide trampled our garden, yet I'm struggling to be upset. Ezard don't much fancy your kind, and he's been positively popping with excitement and overflowing with fealty with each volley of his doom bolt. We've got dominance growing out of our boils, and we're going to use it to field a few dreadquake mortars. I told you, Grimgore, we greenskins should stick together, but no. Look what you've made me do. Elsewhere, our Kizavite conflict has made Kargan crazed with love for Tamakan, so we'll activate his March of the Crazed ability to refill his army's campaign movement and begin the siege of Karak Vrag ahead of Tamakan's slow arrival. That's a lot of orcs, so we've split into four fronts. Kargan and our Chaos Lord are leading the main bulk, and across the way, we've got one small army and a pair of lonely siege engines. With Tamakan's reinforcements incoming, we've tricked Grimgor into leaving a section of his wall poorly defended. Our plague bearers are about to climb the wall, so we'll have our Chaos Sorcerer of Nurgle give them a little something to take the edge off any nasty swords they might encounter. Sorcerer. A touch of leprosy should do it. Chaos Sorcerer of Nurgle is a mortal spellcaster that brings the laws of death and the laws of Nurgle to the Nurgle roster in a nicely armoured package. There he is. Tamakan joins the party, so we'll link our cavalry units up with the main bulk. When the gates are down, our bile trolls. Wow. Yep, those are bile trolls. They look somewhat like the uh, Vermintide 2 model. Somewhat. I mean, they're corrupted by the Nurgle of all things. Bile trolls are a Nurgly twist on the idea of a Chaos Troll. They have this ability which allows them to debuff enemy melee defense, which allows all of your Nurgle units to really hit a lot more reliably. Nice, so it's, it's kind of like river trolls. Gates coming down. The plague can be slowed but never stopped. Who better to spread Nurgle's gift than Kaisk the Befouled? Kaisk the Befouled is this kind of rotting champion of Nurgle. He rides a rot beast, you don't get him on foot. He's fast, he's agile, he's really not what you'd expect from a Nurgle character, which makes him really interesting. With chieftains in mind, I wonder how Kargan's doing. As you were, Kargan, good work. I'm gonna go play with the Toad Dragons. Unspeakable foulness. Unspeakable foulness, I wonder what that is. Oh, and he's got Wallbreaker as well. A lot of single entity monsters should have Wallbreaker, a lot more should. Whilst Temekin and the Toad Dragons break their lines, 
Azar and his blunderbusses mop up the stragglers, and we deploy some of our heaviest hitters. The regiments of renown for Nurgle are the Rotting Riders, who are a unit of rot knights, the Angels of Decay, which are a unit of plague drones, ah. and mm. Noxbringer, who is a soul grinder. Oh, Soul Grinder Regiment Redown. Nice. Well, we didn't get that last DLC for Zinch. Also, mm. how come we don't have a Soul Grinder for Undivided? I don't think that was ever a thing, really. Ooh. My favorite out of these regiments of Renown are the Rotting Riders. These Kurgan horsemen have followed Kaysk since the beginning, but they were Kurgan once horse? esteemed knights. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Reinforcements, eh? Hmm, I think the not. Knights, Run, boys! What a wonderful day for Father Nurgle. As we all count his blessings. Mm -hmm. All fear the magic. Bubalos feeds on a buffet of orcs. More fertilizer for the garden. Our war host grows with our fealty and begs the question, who do we recruit next? Playing ogres? I think he was eating his own maggot. First impressions, favorite chieftain. My first impression, awesome, and Durgle loves it as well. Favorite chieftain, Chaos Dwarf, obviously. My personal favorite chieftain is definitely going to be Kazik the Befouled. He's going to be my first choice. And what about your first impression? Looking very good for Nurgle right there, especially with all the new additions as well as how Tamarcon plays versus Kuga. So what do you think of the trailer and the gameplay so far? Uh, looking good so far, definitely a step up from Shadows of Change, where they don't say, oh, by the way, pre-order like three times in a row. But that's all for today, guys. I hope you enjoy our reaction to the Thrones of Decay trailer and the Tamarcon gameplay. If you guys want to see some more stuff on my channel, don't forget to click that subscribe button, slap the bell, like the video, share this video with your friends, and comment down below what you want me to do next. And thank you, Roger, once again for joining with me in this reaction video. Always a pleasure, man. Thanks for inviting me. Thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you next time. Bye.